This song I'm about to do is called Uncle Fudd, about my great uncle Fudd. His name was James Taylor Duncan, uh, born in the 1830s. My grandma told me all these stories about him. When he passed away in the early 1900s, she said that was her first great sorrow. He lived over in Salisbury, and as the family said, he played fiddle quite poorly and drank whiskey quite well. In an unmarked grave on family row upon a lonesome hill Lies a long forgotten man that no one ever will remember He lived in his brother's one-room shack over in Salisbury He kept his fiddle in an old flower sack And once he almost got married in September And they said he drank too much Fudd said he didn't drink enough They said that he was lazy He just told them all they were crazy And I say, ah, here lies Uncle Fudd Here lies Uncle Fudd Here lies my great Uncle Fudd I went west to Colorado He was 18 and 85 He got in a scrape down in Pueblo And he barely made it back here alive But he did When he hopped off the train He was glad to see that no one was waiting there But how ashamed would the family be To know he had paid no fare But he brought some presents for the kids Yeah, when Billy Murray sat on his knee, he'd tell him tales of the West. Virginia Ruth and Angie Marie, they thought he was the best uncle they had. Well, old Fudd couldn't see past the end of his nose. He never bothered with that. Yeah, the kids would find him standing in the cornrows, not knowing where he was at, but he was never sad. They said he drank too much Fudd said he did not drink enough They said that he was lazy He just told them all they were crazy And I say, I hear lies, Uncle Fudd Here lies, Uncle Fudd Yeah, here lies my great Uncle Fudd Suddenly, Fudd took sick over in Salisbury. And Aunt Martha said, hey, Fudd, what's this trick? And he died on the way to Atterbury. Well, no more beer. No more beer, not for Uncle Fudd. And like a little man, Billy Murray never cried. Ruth and Angie did. When the Petersburg undertaker came driving by, everyone ran and hid and they shed their own tears. Yeah, for Uncle Fudd. And they said he drank too much. Fudd said he did not drink enough. They said that he was lazy. They just told them all they were crazy. And I say, here lies Uncle Fudd. Here lies Uncle Fudd, here lies Uncle Fudd, there's no more beer, no more beer, no more beer, not for Uncle Fudd. off the Sangamon Song CD and uh, the play that we did uh, about a young man named Harry Glenn Ludlam. He was 16 years old when he started his journal in August of 1893. For almost every day in the fall, he wrote that he shucked corn. So the first song I ever wrote for it was called Corn or Shuck.
Well, I could be floating on a boat to France Down at Tuxhorn's barn dance I'm not sad, I am a forlorn I'm sitting here shucking corn I could go to church, head to town, stay on the farm, hanging around. One thing, folks, as sure as you're born, sometime a day be shucking corn. Shucking corn, shucking corn. Some folks got all the luck, me, I got corn to shuck on. Hey there, friends, don't worry about me. I got a little secret, don't you see? If I did not have corn shucking to do, I'd be sitting there bored, just like you. Shucking corn, shucking corn. Some folks got all the luck with me. I got corn to shuck. People in the city, they scurry about. They hustle and bustle in and out. Important work, I am informed, but it does not compare to shucking corn. I does, Jim. If you're worried about what might transpire when I'm done sitting by the fire, don't you fret not a little bit. The plant and corn and lots of it. Shucking corn, shucking corn. Some folks got all the luck. Me, I got corn to shuck. Shucking corn, shucking corn. Some folks got all the luck. Me, I got the corn to shuck. sure why I wrote this song. I think I needed it more than anybody else. Uh, it's called Love is Worth Living For. When you're down, oh, when you've been hurt, when your tail is a dragon in the dirt, when your dreams have been shattered and they scattered on the floor my love is worth living for ah when your eyes are they seen too much and when your spirit craves a human touch when your faith has been taken hard shaken to its core my love is worth living for Yeah, love, love, love Yeah, love, oh, sweet love It's worth living for Get on Darkness in your mind Look for the light All oh, that shines forevermore For love It's worth living for Yeah, love 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 Love, all oh, sweet love It's worth living for Love Love Love, love, all oh, sweet love is worth living for.
Ode to a Middle-Sized City. In big cities, you can screw your friends because you can always find new friends who never knew you. Degrees of separation are your ally, and a scam artist can thrive. Hereabouts, you need to be more careful. Everyone you know knows someone else you know, and there are the communities of artists, great musicians, businesses, and charities, like clubs, JCs, rotaries, religious groups, the Shriners, and the hipsters. Even the street people are a clan. But it isn't small town small. There's local theater, ballet, and bars and clubs with jazz, folk, rock, alternative, and rap, restaurants, museums, coffee shops, and meetups, walking tours. We've got all that. If you can't find two things to do each weeknight and six on the weekends, you're the boring one. Name it. Bet we've got it. Pick up the free weekly. History. The present and the future. Sex addicts, N-A-A-A. -A. Quilters, plastic modelers, yoga. Zumba, Shotokan, and Taekwondo, Jazzercise, and Skeptics, Bird Watchers, and Pachacucha. Street fairs, poets, salsa dance. In 15 minutes, you can get across town. Our rush hour isn't. We have buses, too. It's affordable. Your housing, home security, and twice daily lattes aren't going to break you. Flee the crime and dirt and crowding, traffic, noise, pollution, cost of living, and big city weirdos. We have got the perfect place for you right now. The walkable community. I can only wish. In Springfield, I'm most certain of exactly what it isn't. I have only faded memories of how it felt to live somewhere that is. When you're walking, if you never pass another person walking, and your friends drive by and shout from rolled down windows, where are you going? Do you need a ride? And don't hear you say downtown for all the traffic noise, but accept your head shake as a no reply and roll their windows up, then speed on your community is not walkable. If the sidewalk you start out on changes every 50 feet from concrete to uneven stepping stones, formerly known as concrete, to ancient rounded cobblestones, to cobble shards with weeds and intermittent muddy spots, to no sidewalk anywhere, just where you really, really need one, on North Dirksen's railroad overpass, or where a road crosses an interstate, or where to drivers posted speed limits serve only as a dare. If the perfect sidewalks are all in the subdivisions where people never walk, and there is nothing you can walk to but another cookie cutter 6,000 square foot house, your community's not walkable. If the traffic signal's timing is so short that only an Olympic miler could cross Madison on Jefferson before the don't walk sign lights appear, especially when you can't step off the curb for all the cars running the light, and drivers making turns on red will never check for people in the crosswalk before turning, or fully stop, or turn predictably into the lane prescribed by law, your community's not walkable. If people walk their dogs in scenic parks by driving slowly while their dogs do all the walking, and if the city removes trees just when they have grown tall enough to shade the sidewalks, your community is not walkable. Zen Cohen. How many people walking in discomfort will it take to change it? The Cursed Tree. 
In the 50s, Springfield children carried seedlings home from school to plant. Doubtless your yard has one or your neighbor's has. For its first decade or two, it just gently shaded you. A canopy of verdant summer stars, kaleidoscope of vibrant colors in the fall. Soon, it's nearly four score feet in height and evokes emotion, but not reverence. Botanists may call it liquid amber styracaflua. I say, sweet gum, thou art not unmitigated sweet. For the next 150 or perhaps 300 years, mature trees loose a pestilence of spiny missiles, slipping hazards underfoot. They test the metal of your ankles and your house pets and the limits of your homeowner's insurance. Sweet gums are purported to host Luna moths, but I have never seen one, though I've now lived 18 full years with that accursed tree. Though it's said they will consume them, I have never seen gray squirrels or chipmunks eat the sweet gum's fruit. The resin is medicinal, some botanists have said. But for what precise condition? That's unclear. Could it conveniently be something that's afflicting me? Doubtful. I suspect a botanist conspiracy to protect the sweet gum tree. Hired hands will at best half-heartedly consent to pluck the balls from gravel driveways. Why don't you just cut this damn tree down? Apparently the wood was used for furniture. Perhaps I need a sweet gum deck or room addition. Some small aesthetic comfort does accrue in autumn. The sweet gum tree can wear a rainbow of five pointed leaves of brilliant yellow, emerald, orange, ruby, russet, purple somehow independent of the formula of temperature and moisture other trees require to display a paltry one or two fall hues. The sweet gum tree still stands. Hawaiian sunset. Summer solstice. Sunset at Kaena Point. Named for the heat but cooling into evening now. This place from which they say, souls leave the world, is also, thanks to us, a refuge for the Nene, the Hawaiian goose, who's lived here half a million years, no thanks to us. You can't drive to this point. You must use the form of locomotion that your ancestors were only learning while the Nene confidently flew to these newborn volcanic isles. To walk here, you must learn to walk anew, to walk in sand, through crashing surf, and on basaltic rocks, both slippery and rough. No rescue vehicle can drive here either. Step with care, and don't become a soul leaving the world. A $5 serape on the sand amid the scrub. A two-quart Mai Tai mixed by Bobby at the shack in Mililani in a plastic Coleman jug. Fat ham sandwiches that we hold high in a salute to Captain Cook and his sponsor, Montague the Earl. The sun's about to dive into the ocean a shimmering reflection of the rainbow sky. As evening breezes rustle palms and darkness creeps upon us from behind, I hear Nene bidding us good night. And I remember, even on these most isolated islands of the earth, we aren't islands. Somewhere pelicans are in much graver danger than these geese. A nene in a refuge can, I've heard, live more than 30 years. Hatchling pelicans in Gulf Shore wetlands might not see as many days before they leave their oily world. 
Starry skies in surf and sighing windswept grasses induce sleep. Aided and abetted by the beverage Bobby brewed, sleepy thoughts ensue. Sleeping here one night is one night we're not driving, using a derivative of oil. Honolulu is an hour away by car, the short way, two to three days walking based on Naismith's rule. How many days to row to San Diego in an outrigger canoe, the perfect island souvenir? And then the hike for 80 days or more from there to home. We'd see many sunsets, passing places where so many pioneering people left the world. Do we have enough vacation time to take only pictures and leave only footprints free of carbon's karma? Maybe next time. Well, my name's Bill Crook, and uh, I've been an artist in Springfield for about 45 years, and I've done a variety of artworks, and I brought in a couple paintings today. Most people don't know me for acrylic paintings because I started out as a pen and ink illustrator and cartoonist, and I started working for the Illinois Times when they first started publication, which was about 1976. So I got known for pen and ink drawings. I did a lot of drawings around the state capitol building, and I'm well known for drawings of the House and Senate chambers and for the rotunda and for the exterior of the building. And this acrylic painting is sort of an expansion of the pen and ink work, and it's difficult and it's time consuming, and uh, I'm still learning how to do it after all these years. But I don't put a lot of pressure on myself. I, I try to give myself plenty of time to experiment and rework pictures. So I'm gonna talk for a minute about this painting here, which I started with a preliminary sketch in 1985, I believe. And I finished it, um, in, 19, in 2013, uh, the, originally it was very loose and, and, and uh, just didn't have a lot of tightness and definition to it. So I had it up in the attic of this house I lived in. It was up there for like 20 years and nobody touched it, just gathered dust. And I thought, well, this is pretty good. You know, I don't want it to go to waste. So I tr reworked it. I just used the original composition, but went back and looked at these railroad wheels and the lettering and the details in the church, which strengthened the painting. And I think it's um, certainly fits into the category of Americana because it shows these railroad tracks that run right down 9th Street in Springfield. They Now it's called the Norfolk and Southern Line. At this time, these were you can see they're getting ready to merge Norfolk and Western and the Southern line merge to become Norfolk and Southern. And the tracks are still there and they get a lot of traffic and now they're a part of the uh, this uh, rail improvement program where this, this underpass here was already removed and rebuilt at one time and then they're gonna do it again or maybe add another set of tracks on the far side. This painting here is of the Archer Daniels Midland elevator in Curran, and it's about four miles southwest of White Oaks Mall off of Route 36. And I was able to drive down an access road along these railroad tracks and had total privacy. There were, I would see foxes when I drive in there. And I work, like to work on site as much as I can. I start with some sketches to get the idea fixed. And, but I even lug this big acrylic canvas out there and paint on site. It's difficult, but I think it, for me, it makes it come alive. I feel more 
inspired and more like a part of the whole scene. And I love these elevators with the sun shining on them because I think they have a, a beauty of form. It's very utilitarian. Every pipe has a reason and every railing has a reason. It's not built for aesthetics, but yet the fact that it just stands up there in the sunlight, it has an integrity of, uh, of uh, speaks of the land and the, the, the richness of the harvest. So uh, I've, I like the, the subject of grain elevators. I've done four or five of them, but this is the first I've turned into an actual painting. And uh, I did this last summer and uh, I've thought about doing a series of more elevators, but uh, I'm working on a, an, an oak tree, a 240-year-old oak tree at the moment, and I'm almost done with that. So I just take the paintings one at a time. So I appreciate you having me come in and talk about my work. Hi, I'm Amy Benton and I'm honored to be making some music here. Tom told me I could do just about anything I wanted to do for the next 15 minutes or so, so I considered tap dancing, but since I just got these taps for my birthday and I don't really know how, I settled on some songs. Just finished this one today, it's called Small Towner and it's pretty much how I grew up. Yeah. 
uh, to ask her to double check what page the birth announcements are usually. Uh, and she said, it looks like page two in the Breeze Courier. So uh, some of that stuff in that song you can't make up. Uh, in a class of nine being top 10. Really good memories. Well, this is fun. Hopefully it's coming across okay because uh, I usually do better when people are clapping for me. <laughs> uh, one time I was playing a show in Springfield. I'm pretty sure the only people there were me and the sound guy. And uh, he was making me sound good. And I told him, I usually do better when people clap for me. So he pressed play on a laugh track. Oh no, not a laugh track. <laughs> well, that's what it felt like. Uh, a clap track. And uh, man, that really made it happen that night. Uh, next song, kind of a theme, folding chairs is what it's called. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Fix them to do a video for this one that I'm pretty pumped about. This is also how I grew up. Family parties all standing ready. You grab your wand and sit on down right there. Make yourself at home. We'd have coffee, tea, or whatever you brought. So hold in your hand, sip a little or a lot right there. Depends who shows.
So we had like a hodgepodge, mismatched group of folding chairs that just rotated from house to house for family celebrations. And some of my best memories are on those folding chairs or circled around them. Thanks so much for letting me share that with you. Uh, that's available on iTunes if you're interested. Most streaming platforms actually. Let's see, I gotta grab my capo for this next one. The last two I got to write by myself, and this next one is still one of my very favorite songs that I got to write with my buddy. His name is Pete Holland. We wrote it in Nashville. Pete's from California, and I said to Pete one time, Pete, I want to tour California. So he introduced me to a songwriter friend out there, and he graciously helped me set some shows up. And the goal was to break even or better, and then just make a vacation out of it. So for a few falls, I was able to do that. And uh, it's really lovely when people help each other out. This song is called Taken. I'm gonna double check my tuning real quick here. Just like a live show, huh? And if you wanna sing along the first part, Starts out, do. This is on my website. You can get it for free. And uh, fun fact, it was produced by V. Pat Flynn. All right, here we go.
much for having me. It's been a blast. Uh, this first poem is called Midwest Sketches. It's uh, from my book, Scream As You Leave, uh, with Age Aber Publications. Palsied woman standing at microphone, body shaky and words illegible. Her poem brings her to tears. It's more beautiful this way. Part two. Boombox street preacher reading Bible verses in strategic location, giving Christ to unnoticing townies. Part three. Tallest poet on earth, spreading beauty of filth like manure, as everyone in room pays close attention to what they want to claim offense to later. At least the giant goon actually has an audience, though. Part four. College graduate, living life of meaningful pursuit, reciting his A-plus work from neatly stapled packet, as other attendees work on their dinners, poetry ignored by even those who claim to cherish it. Part five. Lincoln Square's walking ghost theater awakens belief in Decatur, and you can feel its past grandeur, and as the shadow follows me down the other aisle, it's huge with the house and colossal in the dark, and it never lets you sit alone. It's friendly and inviting and alive on its own. Part six. Friendly, very friendly. Beautiful imposter, whiplash repeating kiss of two young lovers to death, Bum some smokes and likes talking shop. Part seven. Cahokia dancers surrounding the monk, going unnoticed for thousands of years, dancing the sun into the sky as we eat PB&J. Part eight. Duct tape holding shoes together, shopping bags keeping cemeteries untouched snow out, walking with the black saint and the sinner lady. Part nine. Stained glass city of shapes, blanketing black Daniel with half-smoked cigarettes on ledges. Bad luck last night leaves him drinking mouthwash in the garbage-strewn gutter. Struggling with tissues, his hands find work giving patrons a hard time, referencing grandchildren and jobs. He wanders off, shrinking the street around him. Always the lowest part of a night in a town like this. Gets hit by a car and dies in the street. Part 10. Misshapen transsexual in business type suit, going to stand up job. Second street crosswalk leading to after hour sanctum. Night after night, sitting alone in bar, in red dress, heels, and straight long black wig. Anonymous finally bought them a shot. They sit alone smiling. Part 11. Dead and homeless outside of church. Somebody steals your watch and you still get an obituary that's half a page long in the newspaper. Part 12, he stands at kitchen sink overlooking yard occupied by topless black woman near pool pleasuring himself. Part 13, faces flicker and mind like ghosts. So many people have been killed, yet his fingernails remain so clean. Part 14, writing the way raccoons eat, the poet pieces together life on naked pages and coffee house stages. This next poem is called Holy Smoke, Perfect Mind, um, and it's published in uh, my forthcoming book with Thayan Publishing called The Book of Flesh and Feather. O oh, you who delights in dancing and wicked frothing speech, who issued forth the mother who hangs from fullness, the falling God, held open and spilling, falling from what great and unknowable heights, the deaf divinity, the mute God, the moon is my absent father, the sun is not in favor of man. Where is the Christ, the cause, the universe is good? Not when you are a stone, but when our voices raise, and song and dance harmonize, and sing out a life, thin, resounding, deep and hollow, the banjo rattle and the tambourine, all things come as thunder. All things splinter away, the one never shriveling, never fading, always falling, never fallen. A certain unity, self-defense, untouched, as if by what of of unknowable, the consciousness is the end of which is of, 
how it has its own memory. The soul has its way with the body. And from their union comes another, something within, a bark that will not be thrown asunder. God's hand disperses the soul across as two, an upper and lower, neither remember the void from which it came, passing through light, passing through light. They all come together in the end, and across the navel of the sky, gone wards man, Than Thanathanatha, Than Thanathanatha, Than Thanathanatha, Thanatha Thanathan, find thy savior. All living things and powers, physical and spiritual, are animated and nourished through the immaculate soul of the Father. All things come as thunder. The godless God reverberating from within, as within, without, within, without, as which is to say of the divine dance of androgyny, palms together spinning, eyes honing, powers merging, the whore mother and the absent father, the simplicity of greatness, the complexity of the disgraced, sing, sing, all things come as thunder. I am the power beyond power, and I came forth from you. I am the thought and the one who contemplates. I am the invisible father, and you are the found by those who seek. Look upon me, look upon me. I behold your form, subtle and gentle, warm and inviting, light of my light, light falling from your light, longing for touch. I see you, Father. I embrace you, Mother. I hear your voice. Be my echo. I breathe deep and take inside of me. I come to you. Do not leave me. Never shall we separate. Love me deeply. I love from a distance. Never leave me. Know me always. Know me always. Do not be ignorant of my glory. Do not be ignorant of my divinity. I am the first and the last. I am the whore and the holy. I am the teacher and the student. You are the knowledge and the ignorance. You are the wife and the virgin. I am the pure body and the innocence sullied. You are the mother and the daughter. You are the father and the son. Deliver me, my children, O you barren one. Deliver your seed into me, so I shall plant it in my spirit. Carry my children, whom I will not father. I am no mother, your children spill forth from me. I am the pain and the comfort, I am the pain and the comfort. I am the bride and the groom, I am the holy supplicant. I am the mother of my father, and I am the sister of my husband. I am the perverse and the chaste. I accept you and deny you. My birth was premature, and you were born before time. Whatever you wish has effect on me. I want no thing beyond your name. I am the incomprehensible word which echoes eternally. I am the loudest silence which echoes eternally. I am the voice and the silence. I am the silent voice singing. You are the forethought. You are the thought. My word has many meanings, yet is unapproachable and difficult. My word has lift and shape and purpose, is lost, is truth, the way, the misconception. I speak your name. I speak your name. I am the utterance of my own name. All things come as thunder. You who know me have never encountered me. Your truths about me contain falsehoods therein. I am your love and your hatred. You repulse me and I long for your touch. I am the known and unknowing. I am the shameless and ashamed. I am within war and within peace. I stand bold and proud and quiver in disgrace. Show me your fear, show me your faith. Prostrate yourself before me, I deny you your glory. I attend not to your needs. I am nubile and decrepit. I am taut and stiffening. Deny me not the light of your love. You will see me coming from your mouth. My spittle spells out your name. My tongue is ineffable power. My vulva is beyond limitation and my fluids bring forth creation. All things come as thunder. I am among your fears, and I am the power in your turbulence. I shall remain silent in your chambers, and your eyes shall never find me. I am the blind wanderer, and I am the deaf choir, the deafening orchestra of the universal mind, the blinding light of the, of the bosomless nurturer, the apple from the amaranth, the grape from the rose. I am the wisdom of the fool, 
the one called life, but I am known as death. I seek you in your hiding place. I am known in all places. I am the holy miscreant, the shameful saint. I am pursued and seized. I am the teacher and uneducated. I appear to you in your hiding place. I appear to you in your hiding place, but I remain hidden. I am hidden. Receive me my blessings when you are at your lowest. Find the heights of my blessings while you are kicked in the mud. My power is mine, but pouring like rain from you. My power is mine, but a gushing cataract from within you. The closer you are to me, the further I pull away. I am the attraction of the repulsive. I see greatness in the minuscule. My child is death. My death is your child. The greatest of your great is an insect at my feet. Touch me, speak my name, touch me, touch me. You are the perfect bastard. You are the sanctity of the debauched. Your voice honors me and your whispers work against me. You judge me before judgment and pardon yourselves when I detain you. I am alone as many. I am your repugnant desires and your sobering guilt. Hear me, you who listen. Receive my words, you who know me. I am danger and I am in danger. I am comfort and need reassurance. I am the name of the voice and the voice of the name. I am the light and the shadow. I am continuous death and life eternal. The beginning, the end, speak my name, speak my name. I live in my own light and you are of my light. My fire escapes me and I drink back in the flames we share. I am the light, I am the light beyond light. Speak my name, I am coming, I am coming. All things come as thunder. Salvation, 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 set thy mind to me. The ravager of earth, O oh God, fear me. See my awesome symmetry. Grandpa pulled snapshots, never brought top again. He said, This one's my family, must be 1910. Grass is high, it's summer, that is collar soaked with sweat. Toiling in that feline, working on livestock again. Worried about his corn crop That we need cut today If it didn't rain that afternoon Shall we bail hay? Mama, she looks happy About six months along Sunday she'd have a sin Now church with God And lead us in song Oh, frames of black White and gray showed how it was then Just as he on his lap and hear his stories again I'd pay more attention now than then back when I was five To hear those tales of black and white and gray Wake up and come to life That one makes me smile up and off to town Daddy tried to keep up With his horse so brown Hard times got harder We lost Daddy in the spring Glad enough the night to raise the roof And keep a rain on farm and things Oh, frames of black, white and gray Showed how it was then Just to sit on his lap and hear his stories again I'd pay more attention now Than back when I was five To hear those tales of black and white and gray Wake up and come to life Oh, depression times was hard Boy, pray never comes again We sold apples by the roadside And passers by and friends Nobody had no money in the banks were shut it say Picture owners' faces showed pain in black and white and gray. Oh frames of black, 
white and gray showed how it was back then Just to sit on his lap and hear his stories again I'd pay my whole attention now Then back when I was five To hear those tales of black, white and gray Wake up and come to life Oh, to hear those tales of black and white and gray Wake up and come to life So the story behind this is, uh, this is the Buckhart Bottom Road song, and uh, that's from out where I'm from. Uh, the story on this song is uh, the Buckhart Bottom Road, the road that we always call the Bottom Road, runs from a church camp on the north end to the Buckhart Tavern, the infamous Buckhart Tavern on the south. And in the middle, it crosses the river. Well, where it crosses the river, the river actually runs from south to north. It runs backwards. And when I was starting to write songs uh, several years ago, uh, this was one of the ideas I came up with was about writing about that famous road and about the famous tavern on that end. And I thought, well, if I can't come up with enough song material from a church on one end, tavern on the other, and a river that runs backwards in the middle, I'm not a very good songwriter. So that's where we came up with the idea for Buckhart Bottom Road. We're going to do that for you right now. I can get back across that river when my pocket's full of cash. I'm pretty sure that girl will change her mind. My girl said, don't you go back to that tavern. We lose our grocery money on playing cards. But the devil in that jukebox, they keep calling me back. Getting even really doesn't seem that hard But I've lived down in the south end of the county For so many years I know that road too well From north to south it winds out through the bottom To the crossing where the river runs uphill so praise the Lord and pass the bottle. There's two more hands will hold them yet tonight. If I can get back across that river with my pockets full of cash, I'm pretty sure that girl will change her mind. Well, that old buck on bottom road, it runs just two miles. That story's granddad told me in the day About a church that sits on the one end Tavern on the other That place has taken people's lives away So if you live down on the south end of the county Like my many years, you know that road too well From north to south, it winds out through the bottom to the crossing where the river runs uphill Well, a line between forgiveness and forgetting May just stand between barkeeper and priest Well, there really ain't much difference where they're selling One's cold, the other's cold hard truth So praise the Lord and past the bottles There's two more hands I'll hold them yet tonight If I can get back across that river With my pockets full of cash I'm pretty sure that girl will change her mind I'm pretty sure Pretty sure that girl will change her mind I'm pretty sure that girl will change her mind.
So the next song we're going to do is, uh, is it actually is the very first song I ever wrote. And uh, it's a song that uh, is about my family, about my grandfather's family. My grandfather was a, a one of five kids, and uh, he was the only one that was, uh, the rest of them were no count other than him. We'll just put it that way. And uh, I wrote this song six or seven years ago uh, when I was first starting, uh, first starting songwriting. And uh, it's about one of his brothers and his wife uh, having a love for Four Roses Whiskey. We're going to do it for you right now. This is called Roses for Mary. She rose up from the table and she walked to the phone. She dialed that same old number like a thousand times before. I need me some more flowers was all she needed to say. Just one more bunch of roses get her through the day. Tuesday the phone was silent. No request came in that day. Courier stopped by Mary's to see if she was okay. Doorbell wasn't answered. No light on in the hall. She'll just need one more bunch of flowers after her all. Roses for Mary to get her through the day. Just a few more pretty flowers. Soon they'll carry her away in one last bunch of flowers. Delivered by noon. Roses for Mary, she'll be leaving soon. The sky was gray and cloudy for her trip to go away. There weren't many books or flowers at a grave that cold fall day. Just one small bunch of roses with a handwritten line. Wherever you are, Mary, we hope you're doing fine. Roses for Mary to get her through the day. Just a few more pretty flowers. And soon they'll carry her way in one last bunch of flowers delivered by noon. Roses for Mary, she'll be leaving soon. Roses for Mary, she'll be leaving soon. Thank you.